Hey, good Sunday morning, everybody. This is First Horn Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Brad Penovich. I wish I was doing a vlog for better reasons, but this is one of those days we get in the spring where severe weather is a big issue. And today's severe weather threat has actually increased quite a bit. All the ingredients I've been tracking since the beginning of last week. And as we gotten closer, nothing has really swayed away from this being less of a threat. If anything, things have continued to ramp up slowly as we've gone into your Sunday. Here's our system. It's now knocking on our door. You can see it just to our west. Um, there's probably going to be two distinct waves of showers and storms today. The first wave is beginning to enter uh, the upstate of South Carolina and southwestern North Carolina. This is still going to arrive mainly uh, mid to afternoon. I'm thinking 2, 3, 4 o'clock, but there might be another line along the actual cold front, which is back here in Tennessee. So let me stop this real quickly and kind of highlight the severe weather outlook for today. The first thing, as you'll notice, is a small area uh, pretty much smack dab over the heart of our area is now under a higher risk of severe storms. That includes most of the foothills down into the upstate, Charlotte, up towards Greensboro, Winston-Salem, and then a bigger area of the medium threat, which encompasses almost everybody, and then the low threat back there. So you can see the threat for severe weather is quite high today. Now, one thing I've been showing, and I'll show you this real quickly, um, is the tornado threat. Now, this is kind of the impact timeline. I want to show you this real quickly just so you can kind of plan before I get into some of the meteorological uh, issues going on. Um, we'll talk about the timing. You can see the main timing is mid to late afternoon into early evening. But I did want to show you um, the, the threat for tornadoes here. And I'm going to try to pop it up here in a second. Um, let me give me a second and I'll pop it up here. So here's that look at the tornado chances today. And you can see why we're putting that higher risk. There's a 10% probability of tornadoes within 25 miles of any point within that area red. So, you know, 10% isn't very, doesn't seem very high to you, but you know, I always tell people the thing about tornado percentages, once you get to about 5% and above, that becomes a little more significant. And remember, a 10% chance of rain means you just get wet, you don't have your umbrella. 10% chance of a tornado is a much bigger difference than a 10% chance of rain. Um, this could actually cause, you know, life altering uh, injuries or fatality. So um, you got to take these a lot more serious. This is not like a 10% chance of rain. The outcome is not the same um, as rain and tornadoes. So that's a high risk for our area. That's why I have us shaded in that red area. And that's why I'm going to continue to keep an eye on this mid to late afternoon time frame. So we'll go back real quickly. There's our, there's our storm system back to the west. The reason this is becoming quite dangerous is the storm system is taking on what we call a negative tilt. Now, in meteorolog uh, meteorological terms, um, troughs are basically dips in the jet stream like that. This would be a, a neutral tilt. If it was tilted like this forward, that would be a positive tilt. In this case, if you look carefully at our trough, you see the spin, it's doing one of these, which is tilting back to the left. That's a negative tilt. Now, the reason that is so dangerous is because when it takes on that tilt, the winds do something we call backing. So the winds are coming out of the south here. They're coming out of the south here. But as this thing tilts back towards the west, it forces the winds back this direction. So you get a lot of basically wind shear. Think of counterclockwise spin in the atmosphere from the ground up to the top. That's a real dangerous scenario for severe weather, especially on the southeast side where we are today. The lows up here, the jet stream is punching in like this. We've got some low level winds coming in like this and then even some surface winds like this. So the winds changing direction so dramatically in a small area is what causes storms to get organization or rotation and makes them quite severe. So let's look at the model data. Um, I'll show you real quickly here. This is a look at the uh, uh, at the, the short range models, which we'll primarily stick to. I'll turn it off briefly just to show you the cloud cover. Remember I talked about any thinning of the clouds. I know it doesn't seem like much, but there is some thinning going on right now um, east of the mountains. And that, that's a problem. That's, a, that's definitely a problematic setup. The other thing I've been keeping an eye on, um, and I'll turn this off real quick, are the dew point temperatures. It's actually somewhat muggy out there today. Dew points are already in the mid 60s and look at even some 70 degree dew points are moving up from the south. This is pretty juicy air um, for April standards. So this is a big surge um, in high dew point air that has shot into the region. So when you get dew point air like that, even with cloud cover, sometimes it doesn't matter. Now the air temperatures themselves, I'll show you those real quickly, are already in the 70s. So it's not going to take a whole lot for this to go downhill in a hurry today. So let's look at the short range models. This is the future radar. Um, you see me show this off and basically our future cast. We'll go into about, um, 
about lunchtime. So this is noon. You could see that the storms are moving into the mountains and probably some showers breaking out across the Piedmont. I'll stop this at about um, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. to me looks to be the time frame that we start to get some real active weather. This is going to be a line to watch here, down here, and then look at the rain back in here. You can see there could be several waves of this stuff moving through. This is 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Look how long it takes to move through, by the way, as well. Um, all of these storms in here we'll have to watch. There could be several waves, and these all could have damaging winds and possible embedded tornadoes. So this is 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, midnight, 1 a.m. So let's back this up. Again, you saw the worst time frame, honestly, for me, is right around 5 o'clock because that's the, the, the worst combination of the strongest lift and dynamics and also the hottest or at least probably the warmest part of the day and this time of the year is 5 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, remember that cape I showed you quite a bit? You can see the cape. Not off the charts, but in this setup, um, it, there's more than enough wind shear, so this cape is plenty to cause issues. You can see the greens. Once you get into the greens, if you look on the left, that's close to a thousand cape, and that's way high enough. 500 would be would be perfect for this setup, or imperfect depending on how you look at it. So a thousand is really really high. The other thing I look at quite often in these setup is the updraft, what we call updraft helicity. This is essentially where the model thinks storms could be rotating. Not that they could be producing tornadoes but that the storm itself could have a rotating updraft, which we know just by experience, any rotating storm is gonna cause some kind of damage. Hail, lightning, wind, flooding, and then tornadoes. All those are possible. So even outside of a tornado chance, you worry about other severe weather. So we'll go to about 11 a.m. This is two o'clock this afternoon. Notice in that line, the model is indicating there could be some strong rotating updrafts within that. When you see red showing up in there, that's, that's a really high indication um, that there's going to be rotation within that storm. Three o'clock, four o'clock, and this is why five o'clock, you could see the heart of um, basically from Virginia down to Columbia, there would be a line with some embedded rotation in it. We go to six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, ten o'clock. So really high levels of rotation possible within that line. One of the other parameters you can look at is something we call significant tornado parameter. This is basically where the ingredients could be high enough for tornadoes to occur. And uh, this is a really good tool to kind of show you how that um, the ingredients for tornadoes is going to build across the Carolinas. So this is uh, going into this afternoon. I'm going to stop this around 2 o'clock. So this is 2 o'clock. I know this is a different map because this is a different, hard to see. But you see the yellows and the greens showing up up there at 2 o'clock. That's an indication of an STP value of, this is basically a scale from zero to 10 for tornadoes. Um, and you can see the scale on the bottom here. You see the green and the, and the yellow, that's the three to four range. So you're getting into the three to four range on a scale from zero to 10 of tornado probabilities. And you can see as we go towards four o'clock, five o'clock, there's a lot of yellow and even some orange showing up. So that's a four or five on the STP value showing up. Um, and then you can see it. So you can see why that time frame that I had earlier um, is why we're kind of focused in on that tornado threat from 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 o'clock today. So I'll be tracking this all day long. Remember my rules of thumb with this type of setup today. Make sure you have at least three ways to get warnings. That include get, that include me on TV. That could include me on social. Make sure you have or an, make sure you have an app, a weather radio. Um, you know, a siren would count, but most people don't have sirens. You don't. You have to next door be outside. I don't like tornado sirens. Um, text alerts, radio, weather radio, um, some type of form. You have to have at least three minimum. I'd love to have more than that, but three at a minimum. And then here's the other thing. Have a plan today. Where are you going to go if there's a tornado warning? If you're at church, school, at the grocery store, where would you go? Um, have a plan ahead of time and make sure everybody with you knows. Make sure every member of your family knows, hey, this is where we're going to go if there's severe weather today. Um, because if there's a warning issue today, I can almost guarantee you there will be warnings at some point. Um, the, the, the tornado threat, that's the one thing. Depends on how things unfold. But at the very minimum, I expect damaging winds will be an issue today um, with both of these line of storms and likely even outside of the heavier thunderstorms. There's just such strong wind energy in the atmosphere today. The one thing I didn't even get a chance to show you, and I'll show you real quickly, are the winds. Um, these are the what we call the 800 millibar winds. This is around 5,000 feet. 
These are really strong winds that are going to be plowing into the mountains today. That's why there's wind advisories. Up there around 10,000 feet, those winds are strong. You can see them coming from the southeast. Up at um, about 15,000 feet, the winds are really strong. And then the jet stream level, you can see how strong the winds are today. So all the ingredients, folks, for a damaging wind threat today, please take it very seriously. The tornado threat is high, obviously, but I would tell you just as much as anything, um, the wind threat could be just as high as well. Of course, I'll be on the air all day today. Tonight, we'll have you covered. Um, just please stay weather aware. I can't emphasize that enough. It's a Sunday. I know a lot of folks will be away from their TV and doing other activities. Um, just be one of those days that you make sure you take extra care to be up to date on what's going on with the weather.